Welcome back to What RT Nips with General Disturbance. This is an M55. It's uh, the uh, Tier 9 American SPG and it's got an 8 inch howitzer and that's what identifies it as the M55 and not the M53 which has a 155mm gun. And we're on the south spawn of Prokhorovka and the commander of this vehicle is Bishkrieg. Just waiting for the countdown to finish. Okay, battle has commenced. Now, this is an encounter battle. As you can see, the forces started over on the uh, to the uh, west of the battlefield. And after knocking that tree down as a dummy, Fish Creek's moving forward, knocking another tree down to confuse the enemy. And then going to a firing position somewhere else. Nope, he's going to knock that tree. He's going to knock down all the trees. Um, and that way it's going to confuse the enemy as to where he actually is. It also means that once they've not been knocked down to the right, uh, it would provide some form of cover for many uh, tanks on the hill firing at him. And his first target is an IS. Now he's got an 8 inch howitzer with about 35 second reload round out. And he hit the target with his first shot. Okay, and he's immediately relocating. You can see that target in the distance has been heavily stunned by the 8 inch round. Now whilst he's reloading, something you may find unusual about the uh, M53, M55, it's a turreted RT. And in actual fact, the tank is the wrong way around. The gun is at the front of what used to be a pattern tank, and the engine is at the front of the vehicle here, which used to be the back of a pattern tank. So it's uh, just like the Crusader SP, they reversed the chassis and stuck the gun on the rear to counterbalance the engine at the front. Okay, he's lost all his targets up near the centre line, but there must be some targets there. We last saw an Object 430, an IS, and several other tanks, and this is a Tier 9 game. Oh, there's a couple of targets come up onto the hill. A T29, and just behind it, there was another tank. I didn't actually get to see what it was. There's that IS, the one he hit earlier, and he's already been taken out by the Wizzy 111 1FT. Right, there's that T29, and the other tank was the Tiger 1. Okay, Tiger 1, Tier 7. And there's a Tiger P there as well. I think he's going to go for the Tiger P, because he would have splash damaged the uh, IS at the same time. Uh, the T29 at the same time, rather. And he got a good hit there for 125 hit points on the T29, and 382 on the Tiger P. It was splash on the T T29. Uh, now he's got four tanks up there on top of the hill, and unfortunately we lost the Oni. But I think this time round he's going to go for the T29 and splash damage the Tiger P. He's loaded. Round out. Oh, that that round went off against the hull of the T29. I heard the sizzle. 420 hit points on the T29. 269 splash on the Tiger P and he picked up some stun assist straight away. That was definitely a sizzle on the side of the hull. So he's done considerable damage. As you can see the uh, the T29 down is now down to about a third of his health. And he's loaded. Now rounds out straight away. And it looks like this time he hit the Star 1, the STA 1, for 514 hit points. And knocking down those trees is actually providing him some cover from the hill. So he's picked up 1.7k of damage and the battle's just been going 4 minutes. Now he's trying to line the shot up for the T29. He's loaded. Round out. Oh, it landed short, but it did kill the Star 1 for 147. Or the STA 1. 
whichever way you want to swallow it. <laughs> so that's his first kill of the game so far. Looks like his next target's going to be the SU-152. Okay, he's loaded, but he's not dialed in fully yet. And he's had to adjust the aim because we lost sight of the target, no doubt. Now he's supposing the target hasn't moved. I don't think it would have moved, but it hasn't recorded any damage. But I suspect he did hit that SU-152. Okay, reload's underway. Now, one of the funny things about the um, uh, the M55 is that, uh, and the M53 for that matter, because it's basically the same vehicle, just a different um, a different gun, uh, different um, weapons mount. Um, but uh, the funny thing is, they actually stuck a tailgate on the back, and although this was really for ammunition handling, oh, <laughs> he just that was a snapshot kill of an AMX 1375, a beautiful kill. Lovely one there. Yeah, it's getting back to what I was saying. They used to actually um, lower the tailgate. And they actually had an awning which would go up on top as well. And they could lower the tailgate so they could handle the ammunition. But uh, uh, apparently they used to hold barbecues on the back of the vehicle. And uh, uh, this uh, little tip actually came from uh, Nick Moran, the uh, chieftain. Uh, it was quite a funny little fact. He actually went over at M53, and so we actually got to see all the parts of it. Um, and it was, uh, it was during one of those uh, videos that he actually pointed out that the vehicles were interchangeable. It was, um, they received the, the hulls uh, from the M47 or M46 pattern production line. And it depended on which particular model of the pattern that they were making at the time as to which particular hull was then converted into an M53 or an M55. Okay, now he's going for that object 430. He's almost loaded. He's lined up. He's trying to follow it, work out where it's going to be. He's decided there. And he got a splash hit for 260. And instead of moving forward, he's decided to move back again to reposition to avoid counter battery. And I don't think the enemy's tried to counter battery him yet. But the enemy RT is also an M53, M55. So there's a reasonable chance that they might try. Scores are fairly equal at the moment. Okay, the object 430 is coming up to the centre line. He's almost loaded. Oh, that one went down. So... What we've got on the hill is that SU-152. That was the one he fired at earlier, and it is missing some health. So I suspect that shot that he fired, where he couldn't actually see it at the time, did actually hit the target. OK, we've got a charioteer now. And he's running away, but he's got very low health. So a splash hit will be enough to take him out. And it does! 28 hit points, he's out of the game. And we've located the M53, M55 in the enemy team. In fact, actually, I can see that it's an M55 with an 8 inch howitzer. The M53 would have a much longer 155mm gun, which extends beyond the end of the hull. And uh, that one's got a short gun, which means it's definitely the 8 incher. Okay, he's lining it up. Should be able to do a lot of damage with this shot. It's lined up to try and shotgun. Oh, and it was taken out before he could fire by the IS-3. And he took it out from the hill. Okay, weapon trigger out of Panzer Fear. Moving quite fast, so he needs to be careful to adjust. No, that's going to... Oh, it was taken out before uh, he could, his shell arrived. Taken out again by the IS-3. Um, but if it had actually carried on moving, I suspect his shell might have landed behind and done splash damage. But there's only two enemy remaining. One's the SU-152 that he hit earlier. And the other, well, we haven't seen that. That's the SU-101. And I think that is in the northeast corner of the map. So uh, Bish Creek is moving forward to get to the center line. So he's much closer to the target. And therefore, obviously, he's going to have a much uh, shorter time before the shell arrives. There's the SU-152. And he's out the game. But I suspect the Revolution or the T25 are about to find 
the SU-101 in the corner. They're up there. Somebody's indicating grid square A0. And they found him. There he is. Dialed in and round out. Should have a chance. Oh, it's a hit. 448, good strike. Three critical hits. And he's stunned, which means he'll make it very easy. And they've killed him off. In fact, actually, the Panther was the one who got the honours from the hill. Okay, let's have a look at the end of battle stats to see how we did. And it's a first class tanker for Bish Creek in the M53, M55. He picked up a Bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 19. A Gauze medal for doing more damage than 10 times the hit points of his own vehicle. And he also picked up a Confederate for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. And he also picked up a High Calibre for dealing the most damage in the battle. Let's have a look at the team scores. Highest damage, 3,937 hit points. He also got the second highest number of kills with three. The Yag Panther picked up four with that last kill on the SU-101. Uh, but when it came to base XP, um, I'm afraid he came third with 1,003. He was beaten by the T-25 pilot one, number one and the Yag Panther. Um, so let's have a look at detail report. He fired 12 rounds, got six direct hits, six penetration and 10 splash. Damage of 3,937 hit points, all at more than 300 meters. He damaged nine of the enemy but killed three of them and he also got stun assistance damage of 945 hit points off 13 stuns. On a premium account he earned 50,694 credits and got 10,000 credits for the mission completion and after ammunition resupply and remember these rounds are fairly expensive they're about uh, uh, just under 2,000 credits uh, a round uh, he actually had a profit of 38,254 credits to take away. And that's a decent score in anybody's book. He received 1,505 uh, XP, and it was times two for the first victory of the day, and he got 753 XP for the missions payout, and that left him with 3,763 experience points to apply to his crew. So, let's have a look. Yep, that's quite a good haul of medals. Nice job there, Bish Creek. I'm a bit funny, actually, about uh, knocking those trees down at the um, start of the battle. Um, I think it might be a good move in some ways to actually knock those trees down, although it does telephone to the enemy exactly where you are and, of course, invites counter-battery fire. And if there's more than one RT, it's probably not an advisable thing to do because they might take it in turns to test those bushes. Um, the other alternative thing to do is actually to find a different place on the battlefield to actually fire from. And there are a number of places uh, across the battlefield, especially on the west side of the map, which are very difficult for the enemy to see unless they get too close. Um, uh, so uh, really, if you're going to knock down trees to advertise your presence, it might be advisable to knock the trees down and then go somewhere else. Um, so knock down a couple of trees, make the enemy think that's where you are, and then go to a different part of the battlefield altogether. And then they obviously won't know where you are because they won't see the tracer. So, uh, if you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it will be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next, very next video.